This video discusses big picture maps that can help you and your colleagues understand quantitative models developed in management science and other quantitative fields. These models generally start as a verbal description of a company's problem and lead to a mathematical model, often a spreadsheet model, of the problem. However, the transition from verbal description to mathematical or spreadsheet model can be difficult, and big picture maps can be used to ease this transition. The goal of any such model is to list the input data of the problem and then relate these inputs through mathematical equations or spreadsheet formulas so that bottom line outputs of interest can be calculated. In calculating the bottom line outputs, it is usually necessary to calculate other intermediate outputs. For example, if the primary output of interest is profit, intermediate outputs are total revenue, total cost, and possibly others. The models might be simulation models, where some of the inputs are uncertain, with probability distributions, and the models might also be optimization models, where the goal is to maximize or minimize one of the outputs. The model might even be a combination simulation optimization model, the type of model that Palisades Risk Optimizer tool inside At Risk is intended to solve. One feature of these models is that they are all different. Each has a different set of inputs that are related in a variety of ways to intermediate and bottom line outputs. In other words, there is no template for developing all such models. Fortunately, Big Picture is very flexible. It allows you to create a map of topics in any desired layout, connected by appropriate connectors, that illustrates your problem. You can even color the topics and provide different shapes for them depending on their roles in the model. This is not always easy. For example, you don't want a spaghetti map filled with crisscrossing connectors. You want a map that tells the story as clearly and concisely as possible. But this difficulty is not necessarily a bad thing. It forces you to think carefully about the design of your map, the topics to be included, how they should be connected, where they should be placed, and how they should be colored and shaped. And this careful thinking helps you, the developer of the map, understand your problem more clearly. Eventually, the carefully designed map will also enable others to understand the problem more clearly as well. The example used here for illustration is a relatively simple example of the simulation optimization variety. It is the famous news vendor problem where a company must make a one-time decision on how many items of a product to order in the face of uncertain demand. If the company orders too many, it will then have leftovers that must be returned for a lower than cost refund. If the company orders too few, it will lose potential sales. The inputs to the problem are the unit selling price, the unit cost of ordering, the refund from each leftover item, and the probability distribution of uncertain demand. The decision is the order quantity. The output to maximize is expected profit. In calculating profit, three intermediate outputs must be calculated. The revenue from sales, the cost of ordering, and the refund, if any, from leftovers. Here is one possible completed map of the problem. Each topic has a concise label, and color coding and shapes specify the roles of the topics. A blue rectangle indicates a given input value, a green hexagonal shape indicates an uncertain quantity, a red oval indicates a decision variable, a yellow rounded rectangle indicates an intermediate output, and the gray bordered rectangle indicates the bottom line output to maximize. Of course, you can choose your own colors and shapes, but you should choose some design scheme and then be consistent. The connectors are used to indicate how the topics are related, that is, what determines what. For example, there are three connectors pointing into revenue from sales, unit price, demand, and order quantity. If you know these three quantities, you can calculate revenue from sales. As another example, there are three connectors pointing into profit, those from the three yellow topics. This step of the map creation process, drawing the connectors, is where you will probably get the most insight about your problem. 
it forces you to think carefully about what is related to what. The map creation process itself is quite straightforward, at least if you plan ahead. You might want to sketch a plan on a piece of paper first, just so that you have some idea which topics to include and their general layout on the map. Then you can use big picture tools, as well as Excel's own tools, to create and fine tune your map in Excel. I won't show all of the details for this map, but I will illustrate the main operations. Here is a map where I have created all of the topics except for the demand topic and have placed them approximately where I want them to be. There are several things to note. First, I have turned off grid lines and row column headings from Excel's view ribbon. A map is a drawing, so grid lines and row column headings are a distraction. However, you might want to keep grid lines on while you are creating the map to help line up topics. Second, I have turned off Auto Arrange on the Big Picture ribbon. For the maps discussed here, you want to create your own topic placement. You don't want Big Picture to decide it for you. Third, all topics at this point have the default Big Picture properties for color, shape, and label. Actually, you can change these defaults through application settings under the Utilities dropdown. In any case, it is easiest to create a number of topics with the default settings and then change them later on. First, I will create a new topic by dragging an existing topic while holding down the control key, and then I will modify its label. Next, I will format the topics according to their roles. To do this, I will use a combination of Big Picture tools and Excel tools. Square rectangles. I'll make this green and hexagonal. I'll make this red and oval. I'll make these yellow and I'll leave them with the same shape and I'll change this one to have a gray outline and a different kind of shape. I will now select all the topics and I'll make their font bigger and I will center them in their topic boxes. Now I will connect the topics. This is quite easy, but you have to be careful and make sure your connectors end on one of the destination topics red circles. If you accidentally make a mistake, you can highlight the offending connector and press delete. There you see what happened when I didn't connect right. I'll delete that new topic, which came by mistake. I'll move this one over, and I'll try it again.
If you need to move a topic slightly, you can simply select it and drag it. The connectors move nicely as well. Alternatively, you can choose the Select All Topics command from the Big Picture ribbon and then move the entire map. Here is one last feature that is especially useful in constrained optimization models. Suppose there is an upper limit on the order quantity. I will create a new topic and connect the order quantity to it. Then I will right click the connector and add a custom less than or equal label to it. Because this connector denotes something different from the other connectors, that is, it denotes a constraint, you might want to color it differently for emphasis. As you can see, with relatively little work, but possibly a lot of careful thinking, you now have a map that replaces the verbal description of the problem with something much more understandable. In summary, freeform maps like the ones shown here can be very valuable in helping you or your colleagues understand a complex problem. They show the elements of the problem, their roles, and how everything is related. With this understanding, you should then be better able to create a mathematical or spreadsheet model of the problem. There is a companion video to this video called Creating a Slideshow. Starting with the final map developed here, it shows how you can create a slideshow where your map evolves in logical steps, each step supported by a descriptive text box. This provides a powerful presentation tool for explaining the problem to your colleagues.